So everyone just keep seated and have a great flight. Playing this character so the whole world assumed that's who I really was. I know, it's something that's changed my life forever and I'll never be able to erase it. Do you want to take a trip for 28 days and get paid for it? Okay. So the only person I think of to do it with me <laughs> is my best friend, Nicole. Something that many people struggle with is getting out of their comfort zone. When the average person tries to do so, I feel it usually ends up pretty good overall, at least in the efforts to attempt it. But what if you're rich beyond belief, and so is your best friend? Your lives have been so nice as you enjoy the finest the world has to offer. Physical labor and a 9 to 5 aren't even on your radar because you focus on fashion, free press, and your dog's fashion. Well then, you'd be Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie, and they're about to leave behind the cushy life of luxury and live a lot more simple life. Yeah, the title checks out. The Simple Life was a show that for some reason I watched during its initial run from 2003 until 2007, as it gave me my lead up to get into other shows beyond it like The Jersey Shore, which I am working on a video for. But for The Simple Life, I asked you all if I should revisit such an interesting show back in my first MTV video, and overwhelmingly, you all said, yeah, do it. So here we are, as today we take a look into what The Simple Life truly Truly was, breaking down how each season of the show changed things up and all of the other fun stuff surrounding such a show, as well as try to wrap our heads around some of the most ridiculous bits of drama that circulated the show on screen as well as off, so much so that the full picture here feels like it's too much to comprehend. So shed your material items from your possession and get ready to embrace a new way of living and what perilous journeys come with the territory of the not-so-simple life. We're so ready. As ready as I'll ever be. Hope it'll take one look, get back in that truck, head back for California. <laughs> the Simple Life only needs a simple explanation. The show follows around two best friends, Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie. They are shown off to be young, wild, and have never worked a day in their lives. They love to party and basically do whatever they want. How much is this? $1,500. I'll take it. But their world is about to change when the use of their prized possession, their phone, gets taken away, as well as their other best friend, the almighty credit card. My mom's credit card on file here. While things get shifted around later on, the show starts off with this fish out of water type of feel, by bringing the girls out of the city and onto the farm. Now every day is a real struggle to get by, as they have to do things like get up early, work various odd jobs, and be respectful. Unfortunately, that's not their style, and instead, they are the complete opposites, and waking up is going to be a challenge, holding down a job and not messing things up will be impossible for them, the respect the common not rich people get is anything but that. The Simple Life wanted to bring you these above the realm of thinking wealthy individuals and put them at a relatable level, maybe even in a way where you start feeling good about yourself in your job field thanks to how they can't seem to function in one. It made you want to keep watching. These two seem so lost in the real world no matter what they have to do. Maybe that called for breaking barriers of what a reality show could be. Maybe that called for playing into a perceived persona put on to you and actively portraying whoever the media, the tabloids, or the gossipers of the world claim you to be. Maybe it just meant that these two friends got to pick out their outfits for the show together and that they really just want to look fashionable wherever they are, even if it makes them stand out worse than a bad spray tan. The show was also special in the way in which it was edited and put together, having a level of effort put into the editing and post-production to juice up the show with more comedy elements or factors that make the most mundane things feel enhanced with importance to drive your interests. It's like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I could never imagine living here. I couldn't either. I would die. Or they're just silly sound effects because they're funny. Whatever the answers for all of this may be, one thing is for sure, and that the simple life really wasn't that simple. So first and foremost, we must look at not only how the show came to be, but also how it changed the genre of reality TV at a very crucial and experimental time in its 2000s era history. Are those your chickens? Yeah, but you got sick. You they killed them? You. Yeah. It's the hilarious premiere of The Simple Life. On the smash hit Simple Life 2, Paris and Nicole find work in a hair salon. 
The rise of reality TV truly finding what it can and eventually will be in the 2000s really was a sight to behold. Every network was just throwing darts at ideas to see if they can spark some gold, hoping to mold that into some golden ticket to viewership. But the simple life, like I said, is not simple in its origin. Rather than figuring out what would be an interesting reality show, what if the approach taken stripped back what another genre of TV was and just twisted certain elements into a reality show? It started off as a challenge. Enter in Sandy Grouchot, the chairman of the Fox Television Entertainment Group, and Peter Sherman, the chief operating officer and president of News Corp. These two came up with the idea of finding a way to make a comedy show outside of a sitcom format in which dominated the current landscape. We get this information according to Brad Johnson, the senior vice president of comedy development at Fox, saying that the areas that seemed simplest and cleanest was to go back to those high concept 1960s sitcoms and say, let's do them for real. So at the Simple Life's very core is one heck of an interesting origin in the base thought of making a reality show in a different way than the majority of them out there. So now let's head back to the year 1965 when CBS premiered a new show on September 15th called Green Acres. The show followed a well-off New York attorney named Oliver who longs for the simple life of wanting to be a farmer. But his wife Lisa didn't want to give up the glamorous upscaled city life in New York City to go and live on a falling apart fixer-upper farm. This show at the time was a big hit for the network, ending up lasting for six seasons with 170 episodes. Now, why did we go back in time to look at this seemingly random show from the 1960s? Well, simple. It became the structure for whatever idea was being cooked up. And if it's any consolation prize, CBS also had a short-lived show in the late 90s called The Simple Life that revolved around the host of a show that shoots in the city, moving their whole setup to a beat-down farm. It lasted for seven episodes. But Several comments and thoughts would be tossed around on how to make a show that takes this premise and can morph it into some sort of reality. Would it be a show where you take a city living family and move them somewhere in the south or on some farmland? No. It just didn't have that it factor for the audience to pay attention to. At the same time as this, Paris Hilton, the great granddaughter of Conrad Hilton, the founder of Hilton Hotels, was meeting with the Fox casting department anyway. Now, Paris was very famous at the time for, well, just doing whatever she wants, being the social media celebrity mogul before social media became what it is today. Model, singer, actor, DJ, businesswoman, Paris Hilton collected every label that you can think of. If you didn't look into all that she's doing or a part of, you'd just think, oh, yeah, she's just rich. I'm used to meeting with actors who are putting on a facade. She was so real. She was funny. At that first meeting, she did not come off stupid. She was in her own reality and not embarrassed to talk at all. There was a sweet to her. Those comments, while well, there's a lot to dissect there, come from the senior VP of casting at Fox, Sharon Klein. Those type of statements paint Paris in this light that a majority of people who only see the headlines of tabloids have never viewed her as. Sharon, while singing the praises of Paris, comes off as surprised because of preconceived notions, but excited to see that there was a level of self-awareness to who she truly was. So this is where the different departments at Fox came together, one looking for something special and new with both comedy and reality, and the other having an interesting personality that may have more to her than thought of. Quickly, the idea formed from a city family going to a farm to now Paris Hilton, a person who is seen as never working a day in her life, was going to be sent to a farm to work. But then, how can we spice this idea up even more? We just went from the thought of a family to now a singular person. So why not have her bring a friend? Her best friend, in fact. Nicole Ritchie, the adopted daughter of Lionel Ritchie and Brenda Harvey Ritchie, grew up alongside Paris Hilton. So the two of them were pretty inseparable, and this whole idea seemed like a no-brainer. At first, however, the producers looked at Nikki Hilton, the younger sister of Paris, but with whatever she had going on in her life at the time caused her to turn down the idea. There's a structure to storytelling and scripted programming that we tried as much as we could to impose on how we told the stories of what went on there. It's a way of storytelling that isn't just random slice of life. We worked with our editors and producers to impose a little bit of comedic editing and structure. This is how we got to the fully realized version of a comedy that has that mixed structure of a sitcom and a reality show, still offering you a real experience and concept only now just heightened in the editing room to tweak the product a bit further. So to fully convince the powers that be that this was the ultimate idea that formed from a challenge to see if it's even possible, they shot a pilot where both Paris and Nicole went to work at Chris's K-12 
canine clippery to wash some of the dogs, which ended up being a complete disaster, but in the best ways possible. While the tasks they had had angry customers having problems booking an appointment, some general clumsiness, and some of the dogs nearly making an escape out of the shop, the entertainment aspect of the mess happening was the spectacle that it needed to be for the perfect reality show that has this comedic sitcom energy. From there, the first season was a lock, and the show officially was now coming in December of 2003. Wow, yeah, it's hard to think about that sometimes, but this show came out 20 years ago this year. That's pretty wild. Speaking of wild, during this year leading up closer to the release of the show, a certain explicit private tape was being circulated online that was made a few years prior, causing Paris to deal with a certain spotlight in the media that unfairly made her out to look bad because of it. Now when people look at me, they think that I'm something I'm not just because of one incident one night with someone who I was in love with. Resulting in her canceling late night show appearances and ducking any sort of interview. Let's go now in our late night tape forecaster center, Joe. The Paris Hilton tape is coming out of here, northern Hollywood area of Los Angeles. Paris Hilton at this point was only 22 years old and trying to enjoy the path forward with her new reality show about to premiere in the midst of a situation that was horrible, Paris Hilton gained a new level of eyes on her. Some definitely in a more intrusive way, but in general, these eyes would now tune into The Simple Life. As on December 2nd, 2003, the first episode of The Simple Life would premiere on Fox to a massive 13.1 million viewers. The first episode of season one follows the sitcom plot enough to establish both Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie as the rich and luxurious lifestyle livers that they are. They were the it girls and working any sort of job or doing any sort of manual labor is not their forte. But that's when everything changes. All of the stuff important to them like access to their cell phones and the use of their money and credit cards was taken away as they both would be sent off to Arkansas to move in with the Letting family, the owners and residents of the farm that the girls will be living at. With the mother of the household Janet, the father of the household Albert, as well as Albert's parents Richard and Curly, and of course the kids, all of whom are boys with Justin and Kane, with Braxton being the youngest son. All of them are very much the opposite of the girls. They all have roles to play to help out around the household or for the kids, uh, the military, and in general, just going to school. This place had the perfect small town vibes that contrasted so well with the larger than life personas of Paris and Nicole. This becomes the clash of the season as the girls were very much not into doing or being a part of the work on the farm, quickly turning their disinterest in the task into tantrums. They would sometimes act like literal babies. And that's not a joke, as Paris has admitted to making her voice in the show sound more like a baby than her normal voice to play into the role more. The second episode ended up gaining even more eyes as it premiered the next night on December 3rd, 2003, with 13.3 million new fans and curious viewers locked in. As the episodes would go by, the girls would be put to the task by getting involved in different jobs, from working on a dairy farm, to working in fast food, to retail, and customer service, as no matter what the task is, they usually end in hilarious fashion, with the girls messing everything up. From the simplest of things to the slightly simplest of things, <laughs> it was always such a behemoth task for them to get through. The other side to this season is when we aren't with them at their jobs, we get these interactions between them and the family with constant lectures needed to be given out and lots of complaining to be given back. They very much make a statement in this small town with less than a thousand people living in it, going out to the local nightlife locations and giving some of the most 2000s fake dancing I have ever seen. I am more impressed that it can look this bad versus how bad they actually are. The final episode of the season has them saying goodbye to the family before heading back to their original lives of being rich and not working. While the parting of ways felt somewhat touching, the reality of the reality is that nothing here really made that much of a difference. But the show's ratings were high, so that's more important. In fact, it received two bonus episodes for that season, one being labeled as a lost episode that contained the girls working with a taxidermist, as Paris also gets sent some fast food from LA. Yeah, I don't think I could have lived without seeing that lost episode either. Now, to really feel like a reality show, they had to play into the fandom and the ratings by doing a reunion episode special. That, of course, was filmed in front of a live studio audience as they reflect on the show and talk about some things that didn't make it to air. While the girls didn't leave the farm with much experience retained, they sure left the Letting family with something. A lot of people calling and annoying the Letting family regarding the girls, so that's fun. Yes, yeah, so they had a curfew. We were late, like, twice. This was only a 30-day stay. It seems easy enough, but they 
they sure made it feel like it was an eternity for them. I don't care how much the narrator is trying to ham it up for the sake of it. It really felt a little too samey by the end of the season. The concept is initially great, but it needs something with a little more flavor to the setting. Well, the unique thing about this show is that each season of The Simple Life takes the base formula and puts some new twist or spin on it so it feels fresh enough to keep you invested in what these two get up to next. Season 2 was titled The Simple Life Road Trip, and this is the season I remember watching the most thanks to one detail. One iconic detail. The pink truck. Yup, these two would drive around in this. And again, it's iconic. This season would have Paris and Nicole take off on their road trip across the states from Miami, Florida to Beverly Hills in California. Oh, and once again, losing access to their phones and credit cards. But this season starts off with a shocking ending with Paris being thrown off of a horse that she was riding for a rodeo show and gets airlifted out and taken over to a trauma center. I didn't know it would go that fast. Paris Hilton is injured tonight during a taping. Luckily, there's no internal bleeding. She's fine, though. The road trip would see things like a nudist colony or just randomly following the girls as they work as maids or having to catch crawfish, which, to be somewhat on brand with the first season more, it would continue to have a more southern and country vibe thanks to the types of jobs and people they meet, like this biker couple, and would end up eventually working on more ranches along the way. All the silliness from the first season is amped up a bit through the more seemingly over set up job situations, as well as the editing going a mile a minute to add sound effects to emphasize movements, facial expressions, or slapstick like moments of comedy even more so. They became deputy sheriffs, butchers, mermaids at a water park, or so they thought, and by the end of this season, we get some closure to a full arc from Paris, as she now faces up against her fears and gets back on the horse, and that's great. I was very proud of her. He's nice. Again, this season to me is the most memorable for whatever reason. When I think about The Simple Life, I think about them on a road trip, and I think it's really down to the show having new things constantly come at you each episode that was different from the last, but it still managed to keep this more country feel to it that works well as a backdrop for these two. There was another special episode for this that would come out later in the year called The Stuff We Weren't Allowed to Show You, which was basically a clip show of deleted scenes and more context-given interviews that paint some more pictures of this particular journey, and it even advertised the upcoming third season of the show, which would now follow a new format. Thank you guys for letting us stay with you. I think mm. that that's so sweet. Now on DVD, The Simple Life Interns, featuring Paris and Nicole as interns at Baltimore's Fox 45. Gone is the farm. Gone is the road trip. Welcome in really putting them to work as the theme was them becoming interns. That's why this season was titled The Simple Life Interns. You're welcome. I know that was hard to put together. This would be the biggest season of the show, with the average number of episodes per season being about 10 episodes, and season one being the shortest, having less than that. Here, we would have 16 episodes for season three. Through the power of public transportation, the girls would be on a Greyhound bus that would go around the northeast of the United States States finding internship opportunities as they essentially are hosted at random people's places as they shoot that episode of whatever they're starting to intern at. So it's back to no phone, no plastic money card, and a whole bunch of new things to not be that great at. They start the season as mechanics, end up working at an airport, helping at a Baltimore news station, dealing with animals at a zoo, taking care of the elderly, signing up to be firefighters, but really just caring more so about the firemen taking more risque photos and poses for a calendar, all the way to being dental assistants. But they just kind of mess around and beat up the patient. The other half of the episode would focus on the girls dealing with their host families, or whoever was there and finding ways that they interact by just helping with something or once again, beating up on them. It's fun to like look at something you wanna shoot and shoot it. At least there's a new character trait for the girls. The end of this season and the jump to the next one oversaw some sort of major beef between the two stars, and the show being canceled at Fox continued over on E! Entertainment. I will go over all of this here as, oh boy, the drama was just as ridiculous off the show as it was on. So for now, season four is completely different and definitely weird. This season was called The Simple Life Till Death Do Us Part, and both of the girls would not be together this season at all. The real life beef that the public was somewhat aware of was brought into the show, but in a much more drama bait for the sake of the entertainment value sort of thing. So this season would test them as they would infiltrate a family and replace the mother of the household, taking over their distinct roles in that family, each getting a crack at it, and the better wife replacement gets picked as the winner at the end of the episode. Definitely Paris. 
Here we have another great season opener, where the person they replace was a nine month pregnant woman, as they were each given 35 pound pregnancy suits to put on and wear, while they still had so many other things to do as a mother. And in the end, while Paris is picked as the better replacement, she gets invited to watch that lady give birth, but this miracle turned out to be a nightmare vomit inducing sight to see for Paris as she threw up. <laughs> the show just had its magical moments sometimes. The episode would bounce back between each of them being the mothers and how they would have to take over the task that the mother had. Adapting to the new ways of making these relationships and family bonding time, or just getting general things done, work. From having to take over the task that a traditional Pakistani mother would have, to dealing with kids that are over the top wild and a hassle to deal with, and even some extreme house cleaning. Yikes. It tried to blend in other features you'd find in different reality shows, and part of the season felt clunky. The other problem was that the viewership compared to the original three seasons just wasn't coming over. For whatever reason there was, not knowing where the show went, uh, assuming it was just over, or maybe just all of the outside publicity of Paris and Nicole started to turn people away from interest in the show. I mean, the 1.3 million viewers for E! Entertainment standards were great, but it was only a fraction of what they once had over on Fox. Regardless of that data, they were planning to continue things into a fifth season. Baked into the final episode is them for the first time all season meeting face to face before a to be continued screen comes up and that's where we are left at for a while until the next season. More stuff we shall get into soon also happened between the time of the fourth and fifth season, but as we return with the fifth season titled The Simple Life Goes to Camp, the two make amends and are back on camera together. This season, for many, many reasons, is really nothing exciting to watch, and due to evidence and claims about this season's production, there really wasn't anything real enough to be considered reality. But just on this season from how it's presented, going back to a stationary setting with the camp held the show back from finding its group and moving the characters around and not sticking with one setting or family for too long. Paris and Nicole would now take on camp counselor roles at Camp Shawnee, where the season had a focus on different specialty groups from a wellness camp, couples camp, drama camp, pageant camp, and survival camp. <laughs> This is so messed up! Season 5 is regarded as the worst season of the show, and it honestly feels like the most lackluster, while also still trying to have that comedic effect to it. Paris and Nicole are clearly very much overplaying their roles of being not so smart and thin on thoughts, as well as more of a wild child who likes to get into mischief. There wasn't any semblance of putting the real in reality, and the charm had gone away. The finale of the show ends with a musical that they put together for this goodbye that showcases their friendship, even if it wasn't that great of one recently, and the focus should have been on the experiences they had living more so the simple life. The show started off so strong with the first three seasons with Fox, changing up the formula, giving the girls more interesting situations to be in or a part of, and figuring out what made it all work. But with the on and off screen drama, the moving of stations, and a comeback that couldn't match what came before it, it became the perfect example of flying too close to the sun, more and more each time, scripting, planning, and allegedly faking things to where at this point it may have just been a scripted dramatic comedy. The show would now become officially cancelled, and ending this experiment of a show that at its peak saw some incredible success couldn't compete with itself. The lightning in a bottle couldn't be captured in the same way it once was. Well, at least for these two. Maybe if you watch the international remakes of the show, taking the base formula of how the original series started. There's a French-Canadian version, a German version, a Brazilian version, a Turkish version, a Serbian version, an Indian version, and even a version in Uruguay. My personal memories of the show are fairly valid to how I felt now. I very much like where the show went from seasons one to three. Heck, I even to some extent appreciate parts of season four, but five really puts you with a solid feeling of the idea running its course. This wasn't a big shock or major disappointment to the girls, as Paris made note that it's been a great five years and we had so much fun, but I'm happy to end it at that. Which is pretty fair. At least there were still a lot of great things that made the show as a whole very special. The way it charted new territories and coming together is really nothing to overlook for the sake of the genre. But in saying that, the more you truly look into the show and start seeing things breaking apart, the drama that would take place surrounding the show really 
engulfed it in a way that had viewers clearly in the know and interested in it, but the investment part of believing one, that certain bits of drama directly given to us from them in the show was the truth or not, or two, what the media was reporting on and really how you'd interpret it. Things here get extremely wild as it seems the list and details go on endlessly. If you blinked, you missed some part of the drama. So let's find out if and how the drama throughout plays into the bigger picture of it all. What's a reality show with two young celebrities who like to party and have lots of money without a bit of drama? And oh boy, was there sure some drama. Even before the show started, we can see a few major things that happened around the release of the show. One being the tape with Paris mentioned earlier becoming all late night wanted to talk about on their respective shows. But even beyond that, Nicole was already dealing with her sobriety allegedly having issues staying sober, and at one point having to attend court-ordered rehab before the show would even premiere. And that's thanks to some on-set reports of Nicole's camp saying that she felt ill and had medical attention for her being dehydrated, with other reports claiming that she collapsed on set and it was something that happened more than a singular time, with the accounts of her not being coherent or able to speak proper sentences fully. This is part of what can be connected to the larger drama of what we're going to get into here about these two and their falling out. But before all of that, one thing about reality TV that I'll mention a bit later is how produced and manipulative a lot of what the final product is. Aside from character traits that would be asked to be played up and making things seem worse or wackier than they are, thanks to the editing, some stuff on the show was allegedly just fake. For one example, and one that honestly would make sense, and people are 100% safer for it to be fake, is when the girls worked on the dairy farm, and to get finished with their task of bottling the milk that they already weren't great at, they mixed water with traces of the unpasteurized milk to try and pull one over on the owner to show that they got through their whole job and bottled all this milk. Yeah, well of course this would be a massive health violation, and the health department would never let those bottles enter any sort of circulation, so this was solely for the purpose of the show and its entertainment value. The show was filled with so many moments that straddled the line of there's no way they could have done this, or be in the situation, or not know how to do something, and tow that with, yeah, you know what? I don't think that this moment is fake. They staged being lost lost in the woods and trying to figure out how to be rescued. Of course, logically, these girls were well-watched and not just because they're rich, but because they were recording literally 24-7 in the earlier seasons, as keeping the cameras rolling in more of their living quarter areas allowed them to capture more moments between the girls for hopeful comedic gold that they didn't want to miss a second of. There was a famous moment from the show where Paris Hilton says, what's Walmart? Do they sell, like, wall stuff? Now, do you guys hang out at Walmart? It is Walmart. <laughs> It's like they sell wall stuff. No. Which, thankfully, she admits was intentional for the question being so outrageous. Another moment that was major on the show that would play up the ditziness of the characters was when working at a funeral home and spilling the cremated remains of someone on a carpet. It was then decided to fix it by vacuuming up the remains and acting like nothing major had happened. And that's because it didn't, as the dead person dust inside wasn't actually made of a dead person, but rather just some cement and cat litter. It would be instances like this that would start showing the world more and more that reality TV may not be as real as the name would imply, but more on this later. There was also an episode where the girls would be in a school, and the two of them working there quickly turned into an episode that was not given the green light to be included in on that season to air, thanks to major complaints from concerned parents. But these are just the little fun facts of the series. The real story surrounding the show is the drama that happened with the girls. Paris, her team, and the producers of The Simple Life were not happy with Nicole and how she was conducting herself, allegedly. I feel if you asked Nicole's team, they would say the opposite. As the show would enter its intermission between its transition from Fox to E! Entertainment in 2005 to 2006 for its final two seasons, Paris and Nicole were not in a good place friendship-wise. It also wasn't a hidden thing either. Either. The tabloids were eating this up, and you know what? So were the girls, kind of. Paris would speak with People Magazine about this, saying that it's no big secret that Nicole and I are no longer friends, and that Nicole knows what she did, and that's all I'm ever going to say about it. Later that year, Nicole finally spoke up about it on the Today Show, saying stuff like, we just grew apart, and it just turned into a much bigger thing than it is. That would come after the majority of the year was spent only really hearing this drama from Paris's side, and how she felt 
felt or saw things, which started to feel like there was this narrative building that painted Nicole in this jealous light seeing Paris receiving more attention overall than her. For whatever did truly happen behind the scenes, Paris feels like she is owed an apology, as then rumors would circulate that Nicole would be replaced on The Simple Life with a new person, Kimberly Stewart, the daughter of singer Rod Stewart, who was another blonde socialite that Paris loved spending time with. But the bulk of this drama would publicly start right as season three of the show was ending, and now the show in general was at stake. What was Fox to do with this? Sure, it had all of this extra attention, which in the world of reality TV and the juicy gossip tabloid landscape, this could be seen as a positive. However you want to look at it, it surely was all a big mess. Paris cared about the whole production of the show and her real-life friendship with Nicole, seeing it as this all-encompassing thing for it to feel fully authentic, while Nicole was depicted as seeing the show and their friendship as two separate things, as to not mix business and friendship in a way that one could ruin the other, which mixing the two could surely do, and I guess here it did. While throughout the years following, we would have moments that were made to look to the viewers like things were okay, and maybe they truly were, as in more recent years, they sang nothing but praises or sending nice sentiments towards each other publicly and still communicate at a friend level, but just not nearly as close as they once were. So just why did the whole feud start? It feels like it was so secret, and since then they seem to have worked things out from that moment in time. But aside from any bad blood between them from behind the scenes of production, apparently during the episode of SNL that Paris went on to host, which is also regarded as a particularly bad episode with the week leading up to the show having practices and brainstorms for sketches, described as a nightmare thanks to Paris being there. But the issue was Nicole not being there, as Nicole wasn't invited to be there from Paris, you know, allegedly, who was then rumored to show that infamous tape of Paris at a special party to celebrate the SNL screening. But of course, her team has denied this and this isn't confirmed. But it would be something big enough to cause quite the rift in a friendship. Fox would make their decision on the future of The Simple Life on October 12th, 2005, where the genre-bending show would officially be cancelled by the network. I mean, if they aren't even friends anymore, what's the point? Sure, they could have replaced one of them, but something wouldn't feel right about that, both in who we just spent the past three seasons with and in the way Paris would look in the public eye. So Fox left it open for the show to be brought to another network if there would be interest. We're disappointed that The Simple Life will not continue on Fox, where it has performed so well, but we believe this series is still a dynamic and valuable franchise. We hope to be able to announce a new network partner in the coming days. Well, coming days, turned into a month and a half of silence until the announcement in late November that The Simple Life has found a new home on the network E! Entertainment, as season four of The Simple Life was planned to air starting in the spring of 2006. But this was odd, as we last knew, these two were not on the best of terms, right? Well, apparently they were able to come back together for this, but they baked the drama into the show. When we spoke about season four earlier, the way they went about this is that both Paris and Nicole filmed this season separated. No longer were the two friends tackling tasks together, but rather against each other and away from one another. Essentially, this season was all about filling in the role of a housewife, but it was the end that truly mattered this season. There's a cliffhanger moment when Paris and Nicole finally come face to face and get serious for the first time all season when Paris says, we have to talk. Nicole, we need to talk. As Nicole immediately responds with, so talk. So talk with To Be Continued fading in on the screen. That was how season four ended. This was both equally exciting as it was questionable. Surely it was smart to play up the drama for the show, tease their big comeback together for a fifth season, but in hindsight, it makes all the real life drama feel so, well, fabricated, regardless if it was or not. Life reunion special at 8, 7 central, Fox Tuesday. Find out what really happened behind the scenes. The two of them needed the right light on them to get people into this whole thing again, to make it believable. Where in 2006, the two of them were spotted having dinner together in LA, and some source mentioned how they looked like best friends during the dinner, with Paris Hilton's publicist doing her job saying, they had a meal last night, it's not my place to say what was discussed or the nature of the meal, but it's a good thing when people have a meal together. All of this implying that whatever happened in the past may just be water under the bridge now. And before you know it, season five would see them come back together on screen and make their peace, showing that they are now friends again, with Paris saying that she doesn't even know why they were fighting, blaming the tabloids for all of this, and Nicole mentioned that half of the stuff said in the tabloids about Paris coming from her were fake. While the E! Entertainment era of The Simple Life is 
is easily regarded as, well, maybe three seasons was enough, since seasons four and five just didn't have that same magic or energy of the first three, as well as the viewers could tell something just was off between Paris and Nicole, regardless of anything being repaired or not in their friendship. But something faker than where their friendship may have been at, at the time, was the setup for season five of the show. I'll listen, you go first. No, you can talk first, I'll listen. Where the two of them would assume the roles of camp counselors at Camp Shawnee. The only problem was that Camp Shawnee didn't exist. In fact, there was a whole early online fan investigation into if any of it was real for this season, leaving blogs out there claiming that the campers weren't even real campers, and that the reality show that sought out to twist the genre has now jumped the shark. If everything is truly fake and set up, then the only reality of it is that the dialogue was just made up and improvised as things happened. There was a real camp there where this season was filmed called Camp JCA Shalom, which is located in Malibu as apparently the camp let this happen for the production to use their camp to allegedly fake the show because of the fat check Ian Entertainment would cut them, all in the prosperity of providing better services for actual campers of the real camp, so I can't blame them for that in any way. A production with a lot of money willing to give it to you to shoot a 10 episode reality show on the property? Yeah, seems like a no brainer for the camp. But like I mentioned, the viewership at this point was only a small fraction of what the original three seasons had. The vibes were off and people were not tuning in. But was this aided by more than a quality issue or because of the previous feud? Well, before season five would premiere in May of 2007, both of them would end up serving jail time. I hope that my tone of voice can convey that jail time had verbal air quotes around it, as both stars would be in trouble for DUIs, where Nicole would plead guilty in July of 2007 2006 for it and only receiving probation, to then later on get pulled over once more in December of that year after driving drunk and on the wrong side of the freeway in Los Angeles, giving her the massive sentence behind bars of four days. Yep, you heard that right, four days. But you don't have to worry about how she would have ever made it through such a long jail sentence as after a brief 82 minutes, she was let out of jail for the reasons of the jail just being too overcrowded. Paris, on the other hand, would be in trouble for a DUI charge she received in September of 2006, and by January of 2007, she pled no contest to it. The difference between pleading guilty or pleading no contest is the full-on confession of doing what you're charged with, only without directly saying that you're guilty of it. It's confusing, but essentially the easiest way to understand it is that pleading no contest still ends in a conviction of the crime and bypasses any trial and possibly could resolve in a lighter sentence through a plea bargain. Hopefully, none of you have to be in that situation where you need that part deep-dived more. But Paris was given three months probation as well, until she broke that just a month later for driving around with a suspended license and her headlights not being on. The judge, of course, wasn't too pleased with all of this, and they really wanted to let her have it, giving Paris a ridiculous sentence of 45 days in jail. A month and a half, if you will, but of course she wouldn't see all 45 days, as she ended up only serving 23 of them before being let out less than a full month spent behind bars. So after your time in the big house, what do you do now as a free person again, who totally has learned from their mistakes? Simple, you profit off of it. I'm just kidding, that wasn't Paris, but rather a viral parody of Paris Hilton if she were to make a song about an easy prison experience. Oh, well in 2008, Paris officially made that song called Jailhouse Baby, which contained such lyrics as, Judge, you're no celebrity, you're a desperate wannabe. Paris. You spent 23 days in jail for like a legit reason, but you know, go off, I guess. Speaking of going off, the simple life would be going off of the schedule. Ted Harbert, the CEO of E! Entertainment at the time, commented that, we all thought the publicity around Paris and Nicole's feud would help the show. We were wrong, it's not doing well. And just like that, the play on risking the drama for the viewership didn't pay off, and the show would end after the fifth season. It almost came back though, this time putting together Paris' friend Kimberly Stewart with another reality celebrity star who we've spoken about before, in one of my MTV videos, Kelly Osbourne, who was already known for her reality show life thanks to the show, The Osbournes. This clearly never took off though. Even if a pilot was filmed, something about the chaos didn't hit the right level for the network to give it a shot, 
and Kelly also up and quit the show once she saw the final cut of the pilot, giving some harsh critiques to the show's structure. While Paris is long past everything that happened with The Simple Life, she still has a certain amount of love for it, making remarks in 2020 about how many times she's watched through the show and how much fun she thinks it still is to watch. There's no reality show like it. It's so hilarious and it's so fun to watch. She is genuinely proud of the product overall, continuing on to say, it makes me feel so happy because I feel that the show was the first of its kind and so original. That show I'm so proud of. I love that it's so timeless and people are still enjoying it today. With the day and age we live in with anything coming back or getting rebooted, who knows what could be in store for The Simple Life, but as for right now, it still seems unlikely to come back. That show was what it was, and it was so much fun. But that concept couldn't even work in this moment. This is a more recent comment from Nicole in 2020 when asked about any chances of the show coming back. There is a long list of reasons as to why they wouldn't come back to do this again, but the reason Nicole claims is that since they have to leave behind stuff like their phones for the duration of the shoot, no phone in this day and age just doesn't work. Well, I mean, that sure does seem like a concrete reason to me. Yes. In the end, the show didn't go out so gracefully. A mixture of a lack of direction and marketing to push the final two seasons, as well as all the behind the scenes rumors of the two girls having issues with one another and their own personal troubles with the law, The Simple Life simply wasn't simple enough. While today we can look back and see the show in a more broken down way, the rise of social media and the ease of access to celebrity lives directly posted by them, we've been able to see who people truly are or who they show off to be more so than ever before. Thanks to this, we get some more instances of hearing from someone like a Paris Hilton or a Nicole Richie in ways that they directly decide to put things out there themselves instead of just hearing rumors or reading tabloid headlines. Paris Hilton has gone on to continue building her empire and social media presence as throughout the 2010s, she began getting out there and doing new things that some may not have expected, like taking a stab at DJing. Shout out to his family. But as of now, Paris has gone from what the media portrayed her as in the early 2000s thousands, someone who has never worked a day in her life, to someone who has countless business ventures, whether you're more privy to them or not. As for Nicole, she would take a less public approach to her life as her focus didn't become about adapting with the social media times, but rather strictly more business surrounding her interests and her health. Fashion lines and writing books became a major structure of her business, as she would find fulfillment in more philanthropic ways as well, giving her the space to start her family with her husband, Joel Madden, the lead vocalist of Good Charlotte. Thanks to the time passing and the connection to celebrity culture shifting, more and more information about the narratives we hear come out thanks to either self-admitted posts or comments and handfuls of interviews that get to open up the conversations of what really happened and who people really were. Paris Hilton was already looked at a certain way thanks to how she was always portrayed, whether that be the fault of whatever production she was on or if she was doing it all on purpose. If you'd ask Paris if she truly is just like how she is thought to be from a show like The Simple Life, you'd probably hear that how she is presenting herself now is the real her, and to quote, everything I've done before was me playing a character. I was in on the joke. If we look back to her original meeting with Fox casting and we hear the comments made by what seemed like a surprise Sharon Klein, there was a side of her in knowing how to play up the perception of who she was for the benefit of herself and whoever else is benefiting. Sometimes it is annoying, people assuming I am the blonde airhead that I played on the show, but I like proving people wrong. An overlook factor of the time with reality TV in this early 2000s landscape is how we now know that reality doesn't really mean the term truth. Producers and editor manipulation ran and still run rampant in the space to craft the most entertaining product that they can, as this would help get eyes on the show and more so nowadays clicks and views online that ultimately end up with some YouTuber or Twitch streamer reacting to how ridiculous it all is, playing right into what they wanted. But this tampering of reality comes in many shapes and forms. From stuff as small as setting up scenarios a bit less naturally to full-on character traits fed to the stars of the production to make it less about who they really are and more about servicing the entertainment value of the viewer. So while Paris would play into the role of an airhead who knows more about looking her best than having any room for book smarts, 
Nicole was pushed in the direction of being a troublemaker, someone that you expect nothing less of when it comes to the situations they'd be in, as that's just who you were meant to believe that they were. Now, of course, some real life antics didn't help that as throughout the show, and especially towards the end of The Simple Life, things off of the production didn't showcase either of them in the best light, especially for Nicole at some points. But in the case of the show, the producers had kept getting on Nicole to fit into this role as the troublemaking best friend. Both Paris and Nicole were able to move on with their lives and continue to find their own versions of success post The Simple Life, as they've been able to look back upon their time in an understanding light of themselves, knowing who they were then and more importantly, who they are now. Plus, Paris came up with the hit catchphrase, that's hot. So, you're welcome for her giving the world the hottie and the naughty. Yes, this is a real movie. The only way to get her is to get past. The hotness of one girl is directly proportional to the ugliness of her best friend. Good news! I just lost my toenail. <laughs> The honey and the naughty. Say what you want or feel how you want about these two, as a lot of things that they went through, in a negative sense, they didn't deserve. But it would be ignorant to just gloss over a lot of the other issues in real life with stuff like DUIs, drug possession charges, and jail time, among other things. But that's not what we were fully digging into here today. I wanted to look back at this unique take on reality TV, as how it all came to be, this specific show idea, really feels so different from most things in the genre at the time. The Simple Life was able to successfully blend the comedic sitcom with reality show presentation that for at least the first three seasons had some fairly fun ideas for viewers to enjoy. And honestly, where else could you get a breakfast deal of half-price anal salty wiener burgers? Reality shows are something that I've always had a personal interest in, as living through the major growth of them since the 2000s, I've been able to see how they've transformed, what new, weird, funny, smart, dumb, and insane ideas they've been able to make, but more importantly, where it all really stemmed from, what singular entity helped pave the way for this rise in new age TV. Similar to how this video started out, which was a loose comment I made joking about making a video for this show, and then now here we are, there was another somewhat joking around comment I made that I'm turning into a reality. No pun intended there. Or maybe it was. Coming out in the near future, like really near future, is the biggest video I've ever made. Yes, even bigger than that one. As we take a look at what helped turn reality TV into one of the biggest genres and what is considered the singular show that truly started it all. That's right, we are taking an extremely deep dive into Survivor. So thanks so much for watching. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to be ready for that video coming soon. I'll see you on the island. Later.